must you go to? Well, I'm vegetarian, but I have a rule that I don't ask questions about sauce or gravy. And I know that there's meat in their gravy, so we just ignore that. So I wasn't a baby for the last few Yeah, it's just gone. She's the reason I ain't need no father. She's the reason why I get up in the morning. Kia ora fado, Albie here, One Fish, One Scoop. I am on another episode of Rhythm and Kai. I am with singer, songwriter, musician, artist, just all round superstar, Tay Renee. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. I'll be in there forever to be. This is just all about us vibing, sharing good food, Man. me getting to know you. What a good spot to pick. Hard out. We're at <laughs> Dumplings, $2 rice. Um, that's iconic. It is. I've been coming here for 15 years, I think. Like, what's your first memory of this place? Just after school when we didn't have much money. Yeah. This is where we'd come all the time, just $2 rice oh, yeah. and go eat it in the mall. Yeah. I grew up here, yep. um, born in Auckland, but Moved down here when I was like four, so that's a distant, foggy memory. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah grew up here. The famous Christchurch question is, where did everyone go to school? Oh, no, that's Ugh. a thing, eh? Music in like year nine and ten because it was compulsory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm so bad with theory, still am. So I just didn't want to continue with it. I just yeah. like making up chords yeah. and figuring it out later. Nice. Like at the moment, a lot of my songwriting is me making a real <laughs> wiggly little shape, mm -hmm. taking it to one of my guitarists and going, what's this? <laughs> Where did that, I guess, spark, passion of music come from? I'm not sure. I mean, Māori family. Yeah. Everyone's singing and playing yeah, guitar. Yeah. You just hear it um, all around you. Yeah. 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 Everyone's always playing music. Lots of Māori songs growing up. Mm. You know, we're singing culture. Mm. So I guess that sort of sparked it. Um, just choirs and stuff as a kid, and then I realised that I didn't want to be a little choir girl. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not really my vibe. Yeah. Um, so I picked up a guitar, and I wasn't very good at it. And also we weren't super rich, so we couldn't really afford many guitar lessons. I think I did like three guitar lessons, yeah. but on the first one, the guitar teacher gave me this like stacked book. Mm. Um, and so we paid for like three lessons, but I had that book. Yeah. So I just went through the entire book and sort of wow. taught myself. Actually play into, I'm going to experiment and learn through this book. Actually, I'm going to make up some words and put it with it. Like, how did the song yeah, run? Kind of. Yeah, kind um, of. I think my first song I ever wrote was when I was mad at my mum. Oh. <laughs> and it was about running away. You know, like kids always fantasize yeah, about yeah, running yeah, away. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Realistically, when yeah. you leave the house, you're going to be like, I'm cold. Oh, yeah, I'm cold. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> I had incredible stage fright. Yeah. Occasionally at high school, they'd make me sing at assemblies with, with my friends. Mm. Um, and that was fine, but again, I had someone with me. Yeah. Um, and it was my friends. Mm. You know, I wasn't mm. being perceived by strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until I moved to Melbourne when I was 19, and the first ever bar job that I got mm. was in a little live music bar called The Branch. I don't think it exists anymore. Um, the building does, but a different company. And they would have open mic nights every Monday. Lots of the people that worked there were also musicians that would just be serving drinks and then jump up and sing a song. And it was the most incredible thing to me. And eventually they just kept getting me up, getting me up, and I would still be like absolutely shaking, mm -hmm. like knees wobbling. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't come out so obviously in my voice, but I was shit scared. Yeah. And I'd need a couple little liquid courages <laughs> to keep me going. Do, yeah. yeah, I didn't really think about singing my original music, I think, until somebody asked me to open for them in Melbourne. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Sing my songs? Yeah. Why would you want that? Yeah, and it sort of just kicked off from there. And I was like, oh, I like this. And I do need to have a huge shout out to Lucas, to Big Seema, yeah. because he heard some of my music online, just random little videos. Yeah. And he was like, you need to write more mm -hmm. and I would like you to write with me and I'd like you to do this song with me and do this, do this. Um, and I'd play him a couple of demos and stuff like that. And he was like, cool, when are you recording this? And I'm like, okay, just having someone to push you. Yeah. And those other local collaborators, inspirations, like I've just seen College Road release yes. some stuff and you're on yesterday. there. Yeah, Ants reached out a couple of months ago. And my favourite thing is when people just see me half-finished songs and they go, I just need a magic touch. Um, and it feels really cool to be the one to tie that up for them. 
Um, yeah, so we did two songs on that album, Poem 83 and Strong Women. Nice, and so you're about to embark on some big live shows this weekend in particular. This weekend, yeah, opening for Lady Six, which is crazy. Yeah, it's like that's New Zealand huge. royalty. It is, that's, that's how I've been describing her to people that, well, in other countries that don't know who she is. She's New Zealand royalty. I studied Te Reo Māori at Te Wānanga Aotearoa for two years, so I did my level four certificate. Just after my kōro passed away, there wasn't really anyone in the family that kōrero Māori, unless we go up north. Um, so I just felt like being down in Christchurch without kōro here. I was like, oh, we're being so white. <laughs> I was like, I need to, I need to learn my reo and immerse myself into that culture a little bit more. Yeah. So I did that, which has obviously helped me. So I think I heard something. Um, it takes, you know, multiple generations to regain. It you does. Know, your land, but one generation just to lose it all. It and does. So you, you know, knowing quarters leaving, you know, trying to pick up that and then to pass it on to the rest of the family is amazing. And yeah. yeah. And, and I noticed um, you've got inspiration of your culture. On, a little um, bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these ones are tamoko, but yeah. 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 And so you are an artist as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like nardwa up in here. <laughs> no, but how do you... Not quite, no. But you have, you have painted... Were you painting skateboards or something like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was painting skateboards in lockdown oh, okay. in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, that's also what I spent some of my like money on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, I need to come up with something mm. that can also help me like pay my rent while I'm stuck yeah. in my house. I always have some quick fire as we wrap up. All right. Okay. I'll chew the breadstick before we do. Yeah, yeah, go. Take a bite, take a bite. <laughs> All right, go. Okay. As I've got a piece of pork in my bloody mouth. Okay. How about we do quick fire with our mouths full of food? <laughs> no. That's, we could no. do it. No? What are you listening to right now? Lots of Cleo Soul, lots of um, Samara Sin, one of my favourite rappers mm. who just come out of Memphis. Mm. She is crazy. Okay. Yeah, lots okay. of Neo Soul, lots of rap. Yeah. What are you reading at the moment? Oh, what's it called? Women Don't Owe You Pretty by Florence Given. It's a feminist book. Mm. It's amazing. I, I didn't want to be too crude. I actually knew you were reading it because I think I saw you post Did it. Did so, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, I've almost yeah. finished it. It's a great oh, book. She's amazing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I thank you so much for being open and sharing your journey. Thanks and for having I, me. No, I, I really wish you all everything you want to manifest. I really believe mm. it and I really cannot wait to see it. Thank you so fruition. much. So thank you so much. Thank you guys. I've got a mouthful no, of that's all, <laughs> It's all good. That's the episode, Fano. Kakiti. <laughs> Order the fire, you dust the flames. The source that they have never changed the price of the rice. Right. The whole time. Yeah. That's, That's what happens when you become famous for two dollar rice. You can't make it two dollar thirty rice.